All right. Uh, mm -hmm. Did I, uh, let me see. Hey, hey, hey. It's the off season. The Mets now begin another uh, winter of uh, misery, disappointment, and failure. You know it's going to end up being Sandy's son that's going to be running this team. Well, Frank, I had a hunch that you were going to say that coming into tonight. Um, it's, of course, another episode allow, allow me to be Frank, the first episode of the Mets offseason. Frank, the Mets, the, one for two this week with uh, pleasing you. First, they d declined Luis Rojas's option on Monday, so he will no longer be manager moving forward. So that must have brought you a little joy at first. Yep, but uh, that's only the first step. You got a lot of work to do, and it looks like they're already starting to fail. Yeah, I mean, it was off to a bad start, obviously, with the president of baseball operations search, uh, Theo Epstein, and Steve Cohen apparently sat down and, and decided that the, the position wasn't a fit for Theo, and Theo is really the only big name who's not under contract with the team right now. So it seemed like the most logical choice. They're going to get stuck with fucking Sandy. You think they'll promote Sandy? Uh, Sandy Alderson will be president again, and, and Sandy Jr. And, uh, and Ian Levin will be promoted to GM, co-GM. Yep. yep, and you know uh, what that means. Will Pond thinking will never go away. Well, one name who's now being floated around is Josh Burns, the VP of Baseball Ops for the Dodgers, and... He's able to go because it technically it's a uh, it's a it's a promotion to you know run the entire department for the Mets and be the you know the sole president. Uh, that might not be too bad. I mean, the Dodgers obviously uh, no, have that that's not going to happen. You watch, it will be Sandy Junior. And uh, they're, and they're, and they'll bring their BFF Jeff Wilcom back in. Oh God, what about Brody? You think he's coming back too? Oh yeah. Uh, Brody will trade uh, Mauricio and uh, and uh, uh, Alvarez for Yasmani Grandal. <laughs> and a reliever. Don't forget, he likes to make big big trades for uh, closers. So, Frank, unfortunately, uh, after last week, doesn't really sound like Baez and Conforto will be back next year. That's just kind of the hunch that I got. Uh, being around the team in the final. So basically, game. it's going to be another off season of. The Mets were dumpster diving. Can't get any players in, not a party. Opening day pitcher. Give a big hand for Jerry. Well, that has me thinking about Oswalt, too, Frank. And I had a. Uh... And the Mets were unable to sign their first round draft pick today. And the, uh, the, the, next year, they will not get anyone back. Yes, that's right. The Mets didn't even sign their third round pick, and their second round pick, and their fourth round pick, and their fifth round pick. And Ronnie Mauricio has decided to retire and go to Japan, along with Francisco Alvarez and Brett Beatty. <laughs> Ten years from now, the Mets have finished in last place eight straight years and have not signed a single draft pick in that time. They have the no prospects in the top one, two hundred in baseball, but they have Sandy Junior at the throne <laughs> and said, and Steve Cohen tweet, 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 Want well, to know what's sad too? When I I was digging into this while I was writing about, I'm doing a man, managerial candidate targets for the Mets, and Bob Melvin's obviously on that list. And Melvin has made the playoffs six times since taking over as manager with the A's in 2011. They've had seven winning seasons, including this year. And the Mets have what? They have three winning seasons since 2009, and they have two playoff appearances since. 20 since 2006 in the last 15 seasons the Mets have two playoff appearances yeah and meanwhile the San Diego Padres are going to sign Marcus Stroman yeah I saw that today that apparently they might pursue so him. apparently uh the, 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 the San Diego Padres are a big market club and we're the San Diego Padres <laughs> 
Well, yeah. Well, they fired their manager too, and Jace Tingler. I mean, they they had a uh, they they had a terrible collapse, even worse than the Mets. Uh, I mean, what are the Mets doing? Is Steve Cohen a comment? Frank, the other concerning part of it is the Mets need to be urgent about bringing in a president of baseball ops. Obviously, they need to be careful and do their due diligence, but they're all in all likelihood going to have to wait to interview, to request to interview certain big name candidates. Uh, well, at least Billy Bean, obviously, they're going to have to get a move on to request him. And Martino saying that it's they're optimistic and it's a possibility. And then. Mike Mayer was saying that it's unlikely and, you know, there's conflicting reports out there right now as to what's what with Billy Bean, but it's not going to be easy. It, I mean, it, 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 despite uh, the KFC and uh, Clem's optimism, Stevie Cohn is, is looking like a, a Wopon. He is a big fat failure who is just all mouth, no action. Well, also Steve Cohen proves the notion of money doesn't, buy happiness and it definitely doesn't equate to winning the Mets had the third highest well, he hasn't year. spent yet only one player he spent on and that player sucked right and they whiffed at the deadline but they did have the third highest payroll in baseball to finish with 85 losses yeah well what are they gonna do what are they gonna do what are they gonna do to fix this team it, it, it looks like the same line of thinking every fucking time nothing has changed for me, I would love if they got brought back Baez, brought in Starling Marte. I like Chris Bryan a lot, and I don't know what – if he truly just doesn't like New York and doesn't want to come here, that's what everyone's saying. But, I mean, he could be bought for the right price, I think. And uh, they have to bring back Stroman, probably Syndergaard. And I don't even know. Conforto's no guarantee to come back. I mean, but they shouldn't prioritize him at the same time. I mean, I'm getting really tired of this. I'm tired of just the stagnation. I'm tired of 10 losing seasons in 13 years. Yeah, and they're, they're going to need to hit. They have to hit on this president job. That's really what it all depends on. And there's obviously Theo Epstein, and everyone kind of is, is getting that feeling then after, you know, after they, Cohen and Epstein agreed it wasn't the right fit. But then it has you thinking – you know, back to last year where the Mets, no one was the right fit for them. And then Sandy just took over the job for a year. Yeah, well, that's what's going to happen again. You watch. That's the worst fear. And we know Zach Scott's not coming back. So they're going to have to hire a GM and a president. And they need the right people in there this time. And they completely whiffed last year. Sandy's last three hires are Zach Scott, Jared Porter, and Mickey Calloway. I mean, this has got to stop. When is there going to be accountability in this team? Well, yeah, it was it was a Will Pond esque year, and uh, really, they made the right choice not bringing back Rojas. Now, Rojas might go on to have a successful career elsewhere. He's only forty, and you know he has you know the characteristics at least to potentially be a successful manager down the road. Yeah, but, but he said uh, no, if you're not going, here's the thing. Unless you're rebuilding from scratch, you can't have him as your manager. Yeah, right. And he was thrust into the role because of Beltron. And getting to the managerial uh, candidates, Beltron, I feel like, should be the guy who they bring back. And I, I, I think I think that would be, you know, the, probably the easiest route, too. And, and I think he definitely deserves it. They'll probably hire someone like Brett Osmus, another guy that, 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 uh, that uh, manages like he's a uh, – a computer program, uh, the, 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 the lefty versus the uh, righty, no matter what. Uh, the, the, he'd pinch hit for he pinch hit uh, Alberto Mora for uh, Babe Ruth if he had the chance. That'd be a disaster. Ron Washington's an, a name too, who has been floated around recently. That'd be interesting. Brought the Rangers to won two pennants with the Rangers. Uh, Ron Washington actually wouldn't be that bad a choice, but they got to do something. They, I, I'm, I'm tired of just, uh, I'm just tired of just like, there's nothing that I've seen that, that seems good. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, 
it's going to be a long off season. I mean, we're only three days into it and you already are seeing, uh, you know, maybe some signs of what's to come, but. And I'm not liking it. I mean, where's the money, where's the money being spent? Would you now, if they interviewed Theo and, you know, we, we heard back that, you know, they're both very interested and they're, you know, they were making some progress. Would you feel a little more optimistic? I need to see money spent. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's, 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 ha I'm tired of it being half-assed. It's always seemed half-assed. Fair enough. I mean, that's, that's really what this year was pretty much about. I mean, they were the first team in baseball to ever hold on to first place for 103 days and then not make the playoffs. That's pretty inexcusable. No, uh, first team to uh, have a losing record. But yeah, after after holding on to for first for 103 days, that's right. And a big and part and of the speaking of players that got away, Justin Turner just hit another piss bomb home run in the in the in the postseason. Oh my god! Yeah, Justin Turner really was the one who got away, and Sandy's the one who let him go. Same with Daniel Murphy too. Do you know what all these players? Do you ever hear what these players said when they got to their new teams? They were given the tools. To become players. Uh, Ahmed Rosario, look at the year he had. Paul Seawald, Chris Flexen. Yeah, yeah. Paul Seawald said that he never had more information on batters and scouting than he did when he was at the Mariners this year. And Paul Seawald, too, they changed his arm slot to the correct one because his fastball always had a lot of variety, always had a lot of movement on his stuff. And Yeah, well, he was like, what, 1 in 14 with the Mets? He. Seawald had some flashes with the Mets, but he, he was, by the end of it, didn't even look like a major league pitcher. Why? How does this keep happening? It's really, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely concerning, you know, from a development standpoint. The other thing to kind of get excited about, I guess, if you're a Mets fan, is um, they do have some prospects who did rise through the levels this year and, and are not too far off. I think Mark Vientos potentially could make an impact for the Mets next year at third yeah, base. Yeah, but what are they? What? They, 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 they feel like they're 10 years away. Not Vientos and probably not Brett Beatty either, but Alvarez. No, it I think, feels like they're 10 years away from being in the, being a team. <laughs> they were just 90 losses, 90 losses, 90 losses, 90 losses. Nine losses, nine losses, and, and Gary Cohen going, I'm out of here, goodbye, oh, oh, ah, of Cohen, he's so sweet. <laughs> I remember when I was playing, I remember when I was playing. Is that a record? Yeah. Well, how about, uh, speaking of, of former players on broadcast, how about A-Rod's abysmal performance last Oof. night for the wild card? <sighs> The Cy Young prediction for Garrett Cole next year because the sophomore year is easy, the easiest or easier than the first year. He's such a Yankee shell. It's not funny, but he didn't like Joey Gallo. He seemed to be a little perturbed he was wearing his number. Yeah, I mean, Gallo was as bad as it gets for the Yankees uh, since they acquired him. And even Rizzo. Well, he actually said he doesn't represent that number well. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's salty. They gave him the number. <laughs> what did you think of that game? It was pretty much like the Yankees were – Yankees pretty much lost that game as soon as Cole gave up the first home run. Well, the, 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 the game was over after one inning. The grand slam. And, and, the, uh, and uh, the greatest home run call of all time. <laughs> It is high! It is far! It is way gone! A Stantonian bless! Yeah, he goes into the... In, he goes, he sent that one to Providence. <laughs> According to StatCast, those two homers off the monster by Stanton wouldn't have been home runs, apparently, in Yankee Stadium. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know about Stat Cat sometimes. Yeah, I, I, I thought they definitely would have been. I am so sick and tired of seeing Justin Turner. <laughs> he was garbage when he was with the Mets. He was scrappy. When he came up, he was really good, too. He won Rookie of the Month. But he was leaving the Army. He wasn't this. 
No, but he never really had the right opportunity either. And the, the front office didn't never liked him from the start. They never gave him a chance. Well, you hear that uh, what you McCall, Jeff Wilpon, walked around the clubhouse one time. And he says, you know, my daughter is like this song. Can you pick, uh, yeah, can you pick some better uh, walk-up music? That's why he chose Call Me Maybe. Call Me Maybe, that's right. I remember that. Yeah, he did that because Jeff Wilpon was saying that was complaining about the walk-up songs that players were playing. Of course he was. So he did that almost like to mock Jeff Wilpon. He was the ultimate micromanager. Uh, I, I, I mean... Uh, How about Aaron Boone saying that the other teams are close, close the gap on the Yankees? I mean, Red Sox and Astros have won World Series in the past five gap? years. and. The Rays went to the World Series last year. That's like famous hot dogs saying they closed the gap on uh, the best hot dogs in the world. And I'm talking about uh, America's first and original hot dog company, uh, Feltman's. You know, Charles Feltman invented the hot dog. And Feltman's is a veteran-owned business that which was revived in 2015 by two Brooklyn brothers. Joe Quinn, a former Army captain, and his brother Michael. And they did it to honor their late brother Jimmy, who was killed in the September 11th attacks. You know, with a team of uh, military veterans that have collectively served over 110 months of combat. Feltman is now one of the fastest growing natural food companies in the United States. Their 100% all natural hot dogs are available for purchase online and at wholefoods.com. You can get them at Feltman.us. You know, I had some Feltman's tonight. Uh, not to mention, they uh, ship super fast and it'll be the perfect addition to your next cookout. I don't know if I'll ever be able to do a cookout because I'm stuck in this fucking hellhole. But uh, I'm hoping to do a cookout. And uh, remember that, allow me to be frank, is presented to you by Feltman's. Yes, we are. And that reminds me, Frank, of what you, how'd you feel about the Photoshop of you next to Vicky Montesanti, the many, saint, many hot dogs of Newark? I liked it. Yeah, I thought it was amazing. The shout out to our social media guy, Mikey Betts, for putting that together. I think that was a great one. Uh, but what did you think about Many Saints in Newark, Frank? It dropped last Friday. Uh, I know we briefly spoke about it on Twitter, but let's let's hear your uh, your. I know feedback. a lot of people are disappointed. I think they expected like a a giant uh, a giant like uh, cinema type of experience. It felt to me like a TV episode, which to me wasn't that bad. But I guess people expect it more. Uh, they expect it more uh, young Tony. But I think what this does is actually sets up something with young Tony. Perhaps a Many Saints uh, TV show of young Tony up and coming in the mob, or uh, a sequel at least of young Tony. Because that's what leads off at. Now we have Tony about ready to, to when he shook uh, the pinky shake, he was dedicating his life to uh, live, uh, choosing the mafia life. Yeah, and I, I think a series would be the best move for them to do it with Michael Gandolfini starting, starring in it. And I was very disappointed. I, think, I, feel I like think he had decent enough casting. I mean, uh, well, uh, there's one big reveal. I won't uh, say that spoiler for anybody, but there's one big reveal in the movie. There is, yeah, with Junior. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was interesting. That was kind of stupid, though. Like, I just didn't really give him enough reason to do what he did. Well, he's an asshole. Yeah, of course, but... That's the reason. He's an asshole. I don't know. I just feel like there wasn't much of a plot in the movie, and that that's really... Like, I feel like, like it was just the whole time they, they were covering everything that happened, but they weren't, like, actually getting to anything for the most part. Like, nothing really happened. That's why it felt to me like a TV show than a more, more of a TV show than a movie. Yeah, I much so would have preferred. More like a, it felt more like a pilot than a movie. And a lot of people didn't care, really, about Dickie Moldesanti to have it just about him. Like, it wasn't, you know, it just wasn't that, like, I, I it was very disappointing to me, honestly. And Did still, you spend enough time on the old characters? One one thing, I don't know if you caught this, Frank. You know, Sylvia, the story in the show is Sylvia was Tony's best friend growing up. So they're supposed to be the same age. <laughs> He's like 40 years older than Tony in the movie. 
<laughs> well, he uh, he is significantly older than Tony in real life. Yeah, no, I know. But the, the characters and the story of the show is that he's a kid with Tony. And he, ri- he rose with Tony. Well, Jackie Aprile rose with Tony. Yeah, and so Silvio, too. The whole thing, the story is like, Tony, Jackie Aprile, Ralphie, and Silvio were like their own crew growing up as kids. Well, maybe that's what we'll see in the next movie. No Artie Bucco either in the movie. Yes, there was. Was Artie in it? Yeah. Was he in the ice cream truck scene? No. He was the kid that was never doing anything. He even mentioned, I'm going to run my father's restaurant one day. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. He was the little kid who was Tony's friend who was not part of the, the crime scene. Okay. That's Artie Bucco. Yeah, I just also, like, there was no Richie April. Like, I, I was kind of expecting to see him. Jackie was in the ice cream truck scene briefly. But... Well, there's Carmella. There was Carmella, yeah. She 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 didn't have many scenes. She had about two like two scenes maybe, but she was in it. You see, I think I think this if this wasn't a movie and this was just a pilot for a new series, I don't think people will be too upset. And I'm hoping that's where they're going. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And I know David Chase signed a deal to do multiple prequels, I believe. So there's definitely something else in the works. So there's more, to come. there's more to come. If this is it, then it's disappointing. But I believe there's more to come. And this is just like the first part of what's coming. Junior Michael Imperioli apparently wrote it. Huh. Yeah, that's the whole thing. And he narrates the first scene and the last scene of the movie. Well, you know, he's, uh, uh, before The Sopranos, he was actually like a, a, a writer yeah. more than an actor. Well, he wrote a bunch of, uh, a couple episodes, too, of the show. Did you ever see the Spike Lee movie called What's Summer that? of Sam? No, I haven't. He was, like, uh, heavily involved in the writing of that movie. What did you think of that movie? Eh. It wasn't that great. It's basically about people in the Bronx. Uh, who's that guy with the big nose? Adrian Brody. Okay. Adrian Brody is uh, is in there. Uh, John Leguizamo's in there. And uh, it's, a, it's a group of friends who suspect that uh, living in the Bronx, as the, uh, as the son of Sam's going out killing people, and... Um, Adrian Brody, who's their old friend, gets in the punk rock scene, and they start suspecting he might actually be the killer. You ever see the Son of Sam documentary on Netflix? It's actually really good. You know what was actually pretty good, speaking of Son of Sam? The ESPN Yankees Son of Sam 1977 miniseries. Oh, uh, the Bronx is burning. Yeah, yeah. No, I I used to watch. I have seen that. It actually was pretty good. With uh, who John? Who was it? John Turturro was in it. John Turturro played, played Billy Martin. Yeah, that's right. Billy Martin was in that case. Yeah, that's an understatement. Billy Martin couldn't manage today. No, he was a raising <sighs> alcoholic. Well, that's why he's dead. Yeah. I mean, literally, he such a he was so such an alcoholic. He went out drinking on Christmas Day, and driving home, he crashed his truck. Yeah, and I remember hearing stories from uh, Joel Sherman was on the Yankees beat back then. That was nineteen eighty nine, and uh, he was going to be a uh, main manager again. He ruined everyone's Christmas, like all the writers, because everyone had to, like, you know, it was a major story, major coverage and everything. Like, and that's how they had to spend their Christmas because of that. I mean, Billy Martin, he, he was forever fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, he was. 
I mean, and, and when he and when he was sober enough, he was actually a good manager. Yeah, I you mean, know, one they won the uh, what seventy seven World Series, and then he was fired in seventy eight before they won. You know, he uh, managed other teams. He managed the Twins in sixty nine. Took them to the division title, and then they fired him because he was an alcoholic. Yeah. Then uh, he took over the Tigers. He was a manager there for a couple of years. Took them to the Eastern Division Championship in '72, and then they fired him because he was an alcoholic. Then he took over the Texas Rangers. Took a team that lost a hundred games, had them in second place. An independent race, and um, yeah, they fired him because he's an alcoholic. And then the Yankees hired him, and the rest is history. He managed yeah. the Yankees. He got fired. He got rehired. Got, he punched a he punched a uh, he punched a marshmallow salesman. They fired him. He went to Oakland. Oakland had uh, lost a hundred and something games in 1979. He's told uh, Riggy Henderson, "Run anytime you get on base." Then he burnt out his pitching staff. By the way, they won the 1981 uh, division series. And then, well, they fired him because he was an alcoholic. <laughs> and then he went to the Yankees. Lasted one year. They brought in Yogi Berra. Then they brought him back. Then he got into a fight with Ed Whitson. They fired him. They brought in Luke Nell for two years. And then he got fired. Uh, Again, halfway through the 88 season because he showed up drunk again. Yeah, drunk again. Pretty much sums it up. I mean, he, he literally could not put down the bottle. And, and, and George Steinmenner would, uh, would try to like, well, uh, you clean yourself up, I'll make you manager. <laughs> so he cleaned himself up for a few weeks. He'd be made manager, and that would only just uh, that cause him to drink even more. Yeah, no, I know. I know. This is a tragic story with uh, with Billy Martin. Um, and speaking of Yankees managers, do you think Aaron Boone comes back? Or you know, it depends what what happens here. If people want blood, uh, Brian Cashman, who is the real problem, will serve him up. If uh, Brian Cashman uh, can get away with it. He'll remain Brian Cashman's shadow, uh, shield. You know what the Yankees need to do? They need to sign one of those star shortstops on the free agent market. I think they will. Corey Seager seems like he'd be the best fit other than his inability to stay healthy. It's going to be uh, Trevor's story. You think? Yeah. Then there's going to be a fully right-handed lineup besides uh, Gallo, and they'll probably bring back Gardner again, I'm sure. Oh, God. <laughs> he is so old. Yeah. Still starting games for them, though. I, 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 I just don't have any faith in the Mets. I just don't. <sighs> Well, my football season's over, but it is football season, and you know what that means. We're going for two here, and uh, that's what the sponsors of our today's show is Manscaped. They're blitzing through the hairs has never been easier, and it's time for you to join the two million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by using the code tank at manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping. It's three and out the window with all the other trimmers. Now go team that wildcat offense. You know, the performance package 4.0 from Manscaped is the perfect package for your package and the key for a great grooming and hygiene routine to make your boys downstairs as smooth as Tom Brady in the fourth quarter. You know, you can get 20% off from free shipping with the code tank at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com just by using the code tank. Stiff farm your pubes out of the playoffs this year with manscaped.com. Well, Frank, speaking of football season, uh, what is your level of Dolphins depression this week? 
They had all these draft picks and they fucked up on each and every one. Each and every one. They have no offensive line. They have no running game. Jalen Waddle can't catch a cold. And Jacoby Brissett is terrible. Two is fragile. And they traded their first round draft pick next year so they could move back up after trading down. Meanwhile, they just got the 49ers pick, and the 49ers are going to make the playoff, so that's going to be a shitty pick. So basically, uh, there's no hope. But I heard they want, they, but they keep uh, they stockpiling those seventh round, sixth round picks. Another boo boo they made too. I heard their, I know their line's been struggling. Uh, they cut Matt Skura at the end of training camp, who had a phenomenal game in his first start at left guard for the Giants on Sunday. I, I I don't understand what they're doing. They just don't they don't they don't understand the fundamentals. I mean they got rid of the guy from maybe he ends up with the Patriots. And you know, if the Patriots sign a player you cut, you probably made a big mistake cutting him. Yeah, most likely. And Frank, I mean, how about them Giants? Best win in five years. I uh, I'm so, I'm totally shocked about that. How are you feeling about Daniel Jones? He's better on the road. I don't understand that. Yeah, I, I think they just, honestly, they let him do his thing. And as crazy as this sounds, Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton being hurt did a big, good thing for the Giants' offense because it made them, go, uh, you know, center the game plan around Kenny Galladay and Kadarius Tony, who looked phenomenal as well, and Saquon Barkley for his coming out party. I mean, I, I literally don't understand the whole uh, direction the Dolphins are going. No, I mean, they, it's, 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 it's completely aimless. And they had so much hope last year. They, they had a really good year, and then now it's all kind of – it's they're taking steps back. With no draft picks. Yeah, now with no draft picks is right. So, I understand you must be disappointed, but Daniel Jones, NFC Offensive Player of the Week, he's starting to look like the real deal, developing right before our eyes. He, uh, he, was, he was great. Honestly, and he's and he's throwing with he's decisive. He looks smart. He's commanding the offense. He's confident. He's throwing the ball downfield at will with pinpoint accuracy. Him and, and Andrew Thomas too. Give credit to the left tackle. Andrew Thomas is, has been great this year, and and it's really uh, it, it, they're looking like two big, big bright spots. Honestly, I don't know what's going on with the Saints right now. I mean, uh, Jameis Winston looks good some plays, and then the other plays it looks like he's too worried. To- Wondering if Tyson Hill is going to come in. Yeah, and and the Giants' defense was embarrassing. I mean, just without Blake Martinez, uh, Taysom, they couldn't tackle Taysom Hill, and Jameis was throwing the ball all over the field on them. And then defense stepped up down the stretch, and the Giants' offense. Giants were down eleven points with seven minutes left, and they came back. And you know, I have a saying: sit on the lead, shit on the lead. And the Saints tried to shit on that lead. Yeah. Yeah, they did. I mean, they were running the ball at will, and then the Giants' defense kind of clamped down. I mean, uh, I mean that game just, like, turned out of nowhere. Do you feel like the Giants have a chance against the Cowboys this week? None. You don't think any? None. Cowboys look like one of the top teams in the NFL right now. Yeah, they are. They're, they're for real. And uh, even shockingly so, they – release Jalen Smith, who's now going to go to the Packers, it sounds like. Are the Dolphins actually, do they actually even look at the waiver wire, or do they just uh, look at the, uh, just what celebrities are going to be at the game? Probably the celebrities. At least I don't get those orange carpet uh, emails anymore. Those were annoying. Yeah, well, who's, who's showing up to the Dolphins game? Yeah. Oh boy. Well, Frank, there's a lot of weeks left. We still have, I mean, we're already four weeks into the se- season. We're uh, now we're on week five already, which it's flying by as it always does, but we got a lot, a long way to go. And, you know, Giants, Dolphins, whatever happens, that things are, you know, things are going to get, things won't be the same as they are now for most teams. I mean, maybe. Yeah, well, the Dolphins have no hope. It's almost <laughs> to the point now yeah. where. 
they got to go up to Houston and say, look, you're not getting four draft picks, four first round draft picks for him. We'll give you one. And if he doesn't go to jail, you get three. Take it or leave it. Is he eligible? He's not eligible to play, though, is he? Yes, he is. I thought he's on the exempt list. He's on the Texans exempt list. Did the Texans trade him? It's a mutual agreement. He's being paid. So you really want Deshaun Watson to come to the Dolphins? You think he's the savior? Who are they going to get with the 25th pick at quarterback? Yeah, fair enough. Quarterback class is really not good coming out this year. I mean, do they have to do they have to suck for seven years and uh, get Arch Manning? When is Tua coming back? He, yeah, I can't play. Maybe he'll come back in London. So I mean, there's still time. I mean, he really hasn't played too much. I haven't seen him enough, just other than his health concerns. But I mean, it's a rib injury this time, so it's kind of best case scenario. Yes, he's on. He's uh, IR. He has to miss three games. And this is and uh, week week two. He got hurt. Yep. So the uh, so uh, he'll be out this week, and then uh, we'll see if they uh, activate him when they go to play the Jaguars in London. Thank God, are you and Doug's going to go to that? No. Why not? Were there plans or anything to potentially go out uh, there? It's too much of a hassle to fly to London. <laughs> Would have been very great for content, though, to have you see Yeah, there. but it's just it's a pain in the ass to go to London. True. Fair enough. I mean, if the game was in Florida, we would have went. For sure. Frank, you see uh, Dave Roberts took Scherzer out in the fifth inning? Yeah, I saw that. That's a little bit of a crazy move. He overmanages. Yeah. I mean, that was definitely a prime example. But it always it. works out for the Dodgers. These, uh, these are not the Mets. No, the Mets, everything, will, no matter what happens, it's, it's going to end up blowing up in their face. The Dodgers and the Yankees and teams like that, they just always land on their feet. Well, yeah, I mean, as bad as the Yankees looked at times this year, the fact that they even won 92 games and made the wild card is pretty astounding. The Yankees had to play the Red Sox, Blue Jays, and Rays for their final nine games and went six and three. But Frank, uh, speaking of you and Doug's, um, I know you guys were once looking for places. Now you're separately looking for places. How's the moving situation going? Uh, it's, it just sucks. It really sucks. I'm stuck in this place. And now they're saying I have to renew my lease and I have to give them two months notice to renew my lease. And my rent's going up another $100. It's going to be up to eighteen fifty. Oh, my God. Meanwhile, they're talking about getting rid of the parking here, and they want to build a playground. So you'd have to park on the street? Yeah, where well, there's no parking on the street. God. Well, the, uh, the, basically, uh, my, uh, the, 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 basically yeah, the superintendent says that we should have make ways where you don't need a car and, and, uh, and uh, more people should carpool. As he drives his uh, smart car. Oh, my God. A smart car that, by the way, has a field of burn bumper sticker. It's not surprising, but so when when is your lease up? Well, I renewed for six months, so it's up in December. Oh, God. So you have a six-month lease to buy time to look for places, but when's the last time you even looked at anything? I applied at these apartments that are finishing up construction now. And I'm hoping to get it. Where is it, Belleville? Yep. So you're looking to move across town or where? Stay on the same side? Uh, across town. Across town. Well, I'm hoping for it, Frank. I mean, you've been looking for a long time. You got to get out of this place. I mean, this place gets smaller every day. It just feels like the walls are closing in on me. <laughs> Maybe they are. The of my oven now doesn't uh, doesn't turn off. 
It doesn't turn it off. No, it stays hot all the time. That's probably not safe. No, probably isn't. I uh, actually tried to cook some fries in it the other day, and when I was turning it off, I actually uh, got a burn turning the uh, dial on it. Oh my god! You gotta do something about that. What do you? Is anyone gonna replace it or? No, they don't. They only replace the ovens when people move out. Oh my god! That can't be good, Frank. I think you should definitely uh, talk to someone about that. And I'm just tired of being here. I, I want out. I know. How long have you been there for? Since 2008. Wow. So you watched the second Mets collapse while you were in there. Well, uh, yeah. I was. Act- I actually moved in September of 2008. Oh God. So that, this place might be the mush for you then. I mean, they've only had three winning seasons since I've been here. Yeah, that's pretty horrible. And I I have no confidence in this team. No, I mean, they have a lot of work to do, and it's just like you don't know what, what actually, you know, you hear all these names and all the smoke, but, like, how much of it actually comes true? Not much. I mean, if they're if they're gonna lose Baez, they're gonna lose Conforto, they're gonna lose uh, Strowman, they're gonna lose Syndergaard. Who's gonna replace these guys? Are, are they really gonna go on the cheap? This team can't continue to go on the cheap. They can't continue to be half-assed. They should sign one of the top starters on the market, even if they let Strowman go. They gotta get maybe Gosman. Do, do, do you think they will? Honestly, I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea what their thinking and what their blueprint is to compete next year, and they're going to have to break the bank to do it. I think the problem is, too, they don't even have anyone in there who's going to make those decisions yet. So until they do, I mean, they're really, you know, it's a mystery of what they're going to do. It looks like the, it looks like the, the, the gang that can't shoot straight. They never tell you the truth. Uh, I, I, I really, truly believe that the Groms hurt worse than they, they're letting on. Well, if his elbow doesn't hold up, he's going to have to get to Tommy John, and he'll miss two seasons. And he's a big reason why they collapsed this year. I mean, think of it. He would have made 15 to 16 more starts. And look at this. The Cardinal, the, taking out Scherzer work. Nobody scores. No one scored. Uh, what is with everyone taking these just wild-ass swings? That was a good pitch by Joe Kelly, too. Nice slider. Probably would have been a strike. There was no way the Dodgers can lose this game. Uh, but, Frank, what else is going on in your week? What's been going on? I feel like you've been quiet lately. And uh, got anything good coming up? And what have you been No, uh, No, not really. The devil's going to suck. <laughs> The Nets are uh, imploding. Kyrie's not going to be play home games, apparently. It's clusterfuck. He can't, he can't practice with the team right now. It truly is a clusterfuck. Yeah, and the Nets are like your best hope at like ending your title drought for your teams and for New York. So de Blasio will end his reign... With no titles. Yep. He, isn't he like the first New York mayor to not have one team win a title? In over 100 years. That's incredible. Over 100 years. Even David Dinkins had one. Who won that when he was there? Super Bowl 25. Giants? Yep. Yeah, I mean, de Blasio said he wasn't going to pay for any parades, and he got his wish, apparently. Remember last year when there was a whole thing where de Blasio tried to make it like he was going to block the uh, ownership deal from the yeah. Ponds to Steve Cohen? I'm shocked he didn't.
he, well, he, he just flat out is a Marxist. Yeah, I can't wait until he's out of office very soon. When is when is it up? Well, he can't run. Can't run anymore. Yeah. So when is his term end? Uh, December thirty first. Oh, wow. All right. We'll be bringing the new new year in a good way, I guess. Yeah, the uh, the election's going on now. Uh, the uh, Republicans have uh, Curtis Sliwa running. I mean, I can't see him, Sliwa. I actually met Sliwa a couple of weeks ago. Where? Outside of uh, Penn Station. And you just recognized him, went up to him? Well, he has his Red Bay Ray on. It's hard not to recognize him. True. Yeah. What'd you say to him? I said that, that if you're mayor, you have to be bet you have to treat the Mets better. <laughs> what did he say? He says, I can't. I'm a Yankee fan. Oh my God. I already he don't like actually once said that uh he said this like twenty years ago, jokingly. If he was mayor, he'd evict Mets. No. <laughs> He God. says that he goes when he went. He was said that when he was when he goes to Met games, he can't he can't go to Met games because he looks over there. He thinks it's a, 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 called uh, Flood, Dirt World uh, Dirt World Stadium with the uh, Iron Triangle. Oh my God! So he's like this like typical like Yankee hey, boom 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 guy. Oh God! Where's his chain? I actually I actually listened to his radio show at one time. I was you it? know who you know who he is, the Guardian Angels guy. No. You don't know about the Guardian Angels? No, tell me. Okay, the Guardian Angels, they're still around. But in the eighties, these were uh a group of kids, twenty, twenty five year old guys, that with red berets would ride subways and walk old ladies home. What the fuck? So it was like a street gang that was like a good street gang. And they called themselves the Guardian Angels. And they would uh, get on subway trains and they started getting donors for their uh, support and their cause. And they would like uh, fight, uh, the, fight the crime. They'd be like uh, watching out for people. And when there's like an old lady, they'd like, they'd like help her off the train. If they saw someone like trying to like uh, start a fight, they come up there and they'd stop the fight or they'd uh, they, uh, they basically would defend the, uh, the the people who were being victimized. And mm -hmm. Curtis Lee were founded this organization. Really? Yes. Now is and, this they wore, and they wore white t-shirts, red berets that said Guardian Angels. Is this being talked about now, now that he's running? Or? Well, everyone knows. The Guardian Angels are still active. Oh my god. And they're seen Whenever there's like discussion. a crime or something like that in New York, the Guardian Angels go out and like uh, try to get tips. That's insane. And he was like uh and Curse was like 2025. 20, uh then he ran a foul with John Gotti Jr. John Gotti Jr. actually tried to have him killed. Why? Because he said bad things about John Gotti. Oh my god. He got he actually got shot in the ass. No way. Yep. So it was a failed hit. Yep. Uh, the uh, trial, the case went to trial twice with hung jury, and then finally, they just stopped trying to pursue it. John Gotti Jr. was in prison too, wasn't he? Oh yeah. So speaking, speaking of bad uh, movies, the Gotti movie with John Travolta was horrible. So. With all this fame and all, Curtis Sliwa eventually got his own radio show on WABC. And he used to do like a show with like the ultra liberal uh, communist uh, 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 attorney, uh, Ron Kuby, with the ponytail. Sure, they had and, some good conversations. Oh, it was, it was actually an interesting show. It was on in the mornings on uh, WABC. And, uh, so Curtis Sliwa, and then he was always talking about. Uh, I remember he. I remember listening to him ninety five talk about. Oh, and, and, and Jerry Garcia's dead. How could anyone listen to that music? 
you know, if you want to listen to code music, I was listening to the Bee Gees, going to the clubs all night, <laughs> watching Reggie Jackson hit home runs. Oh my God. Yeah, this is the. He has no shot to win. I mean, it could be a miracle he could win because he's got a lot of popular support. A lot of people like him. He's always been popular, but I mean, uh, Eric Adams is probably going to be the next mayor. And he's going to stun some people. I, I mean, this guy, uh, I, think, I think he's like a Brooklyn borough president. Uh, he, he's an African-American. I think he's a former police officer. And, uh, you know, he cannot possibly be worse than de Blasio. He cannot possibly be worse. Yeah, you could say that about a lot of people. Uh, 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 he beat, uh, who did he beat? Lee. That guy, Lee. That the psycho lunatics wanted to win. Yeah. What was his name? Oh, no, no. Uh, what, what, what was his name? Andrew, what's his uh, name? Yang. Andrew Yang. Yeah, Andrew yeah. Yang. He actually was uh, campaigning outside City Field, and I walked right behind him one day this year. Yeah, he's a Mets fan. Just, yeah, just before the uh, the primary. I'm, I mean, uh, I mean that's the guy that uh, AOC was campaigning for, which is why he why 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 he had to lose. Yeah, definitely. And I, Thank God. I think he actually finished last. <laughs> She's like the fucking kiss of death. I, 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 I think he I think he I think he I don't even think he finished like second or third. I know it was a close primary, but uh, Eric Adams. Ended up getting a good majority. Uh, got the so he's going to be the next mayor. But I imagine he. I, I mean, he can't be worse. No, no, I don't think so. Frank, uh, before I forget, uh, I, I have a pretty interesting story involving you as the topic of conversation. Um, before the Mets' last home game last week, uh, I got to speak to Patrick Mazika, and I was asking him about the photoshops he made about. During the Frank the Tank Challenge and about Oswald, you know, I actually took the uh, winner of the Frank the Tank Challenge to the last game. Oh, you did? Yeah, that's who that was. Yep. How was that experience? That was good. Mets actually played good in that game, so yeah, I was there, and uh, I had a very nice conversation with Louis Rojas too before and for the game. He he was at peace, and, and you know, I thanked him for you know for being so great this year, and he always gave us the time you know, of day. If they could make him like a director of player development, that's where he belongs. The, he is a minor league guy. They offered him another role in the organization, so it it just depends if he's going to take it or if he or if he gets a job elsewhere. I mean, this is a guy that if you put a good manager with him, and he can learn, maybe he could be good. But he is not there, and and the fact that he got trust in the managing managerial job just tells you how what a poor position he was in last year and how the Mets, he should have never been the manager. Well, Beltran was supposed to be the manager and he got, you know, Rojas got thrown in before he was ready. Yeah, well, Beltran should have never been fired. Yeah, well, he definitely deserves a second chance after Hinch and Cora got brought back after a year. <sighs> the Mets got to do something this offseason. They got to have uh, an offseason where they where, where, uh, where, they, where they need to become, uh, if not past the Dodgers, up to the Dodgers level. They have to blow past the luxury tax. If they don't, then Steve Cohen's a fault, if you ask me. Yeah, there has to be fireworks. I totally agree. I mean, I mean the, the Mets have the dirt highest payroll, but a lot of that's dead money. Robbie Cano's coming back. Yeah, I don't want them spinning that Robbie Cano is the big offseason addition. He shouldn't be on the team next year. They should cut a check and pay him to walk. Yeah. They should have the uh, Robbie Cano day the day after uh, Bobby Bonilla day. <laughs> In fact, they should do it like this. When, when is Bobby Bonilla day end? 2036? Yeah, I think so. 
Start uh, Robbie Cano Day in 2037. Yeah, that'll be fun for the fans. Maybe he could stay Airbnb at uh, City Field like Bobby Bonilla did this year. I mean, just just think of it as a uh, a pension, a retirement fund. Yeah, I mean, well, most of that money is going to be guaranteed to him anyway. So, do you know a lot of teams do these dead contracts? It just the Mets fucked it up so royally with Bobby Bonilla. It actually became a story. Yeah, and because it's the Mets, they love to exploit them. But I just Patrick, have no confidence in them. Patrick Mazika thought it was pretty funny that you said Lindor was going to break his neck from turning around after all the home runs Oswald gave up. <laughs> According to Mazika, Oswald thinks it's hilarious, too. Like, he's a good sport about it. Oh. He just sucks. I have nothing against him, but he sucks. Well, you didn't have to see him. Uh, he pitched to the 4th of July, and then you didn't have to see him the rest of the year. So. Well, I was at the 4th of July game, and I saw him, and he sucked. Yeah. She was just a three-run homer, which was wouldn't have been a three-run homer in any other park besides the Yankee Stadium. I'm just, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't want to see Jared Eikhoff on the team next year. I want to see a team that's healthy. I want to see a team that spends. I want to see a team that has a circular lineup, not one that has like two or three hitters, and then the rest of the lineup, you know, is not going to get the job done. Yeah, you want. I want players. exciting players. I want Baez to stay. Let Conforto walk. Given the qualifying offer, he doesn't take it. Rejoice when he signs elsewhere. So then they get another pick. And they should and they should not be concerned about losing a pick. They got they they can't lose the eleventh pick. But they could lose the uh, 14th pick. So you lose the 14th pick, so what? Make the pick. Make a make a splash signing. Well yeah, if they sign Castellanos, that pick uh, they lose that fourteenth pick. They also gave up a pick for Michael Kadire years ago. Like we all know how that turned out. The Mets got to just have a good off season, and it starts by hiring the right guy. And Sandy Alderson has to just get out the fucking way. Yeah, no, I agree with you. So, on that note, uh, we got some good ass to tank tonight for you. Um, Rico Bosco fan wants to know, Frank, who would you want to play you in the Barstool movie when it's inevitably made? Hmm. If I could find a time machine, I'll take John Candy. <laughs> That'd be amazing. John Candy was a legend. Yes. Sucks that we or maybe lost. Chris, another one that would have been good would be Chris Farley. Another another great one gone way too soon. Anyone living or? I can't think of anyone. I think Seth Rogen's lost too much weight. Yeah. And he's kind of a prick. Really? Does he have a... Oh, Seth Rogen. I was thinking Jonah Hill. Oh, um, maybe I'm getting them confused. Why Why is he a prick? Whoever you're, whichever one you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know. Something, uh, something about him just rubs me the wrong way. Fair enough. Furkan Kormaz fan wants to know, what makes you think Sandy Jr. will be the next GM? Because that's the way the Mets operate. It just never changes. They never go the extra mile to get the people who should uh, be good. They always do things half-assed. And Sandy has way too much power and too much say. Fair enough. Um, Cruz wants to know who will win the World Series this year and who will be the Mets' next feeble manager. Dodgers are going to win the World Series. You think? Yeah. And the Mets' next field manager? Feeble. (sighs) The next feeble manager. They'll probably pick Brad Osmus. (laughs) You think? Just piss me off. Then you can't complain about him until Memorial Day. And 
June first, it will be all the oxen free. <laughs> well, hey, they, the Mets were in first until uh, until August this year, so it's not even like that long of a season when you think about it. Memorial Day it really doesn't tell us anything. Well, that's like the first marker demarcation. That's true, but on that note, we have a long, long, long off season. Hopefully, maybe the Dolphins will actually win a game for you this week, Frank. Hopefully, the Giants will. will turn their season around. There's no way the Dolphins are winning this week. Who are they playing? Tampa. Oh, yeah, there's no way they're winning. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, the next two games are against uh, the next two games are against Florida teams. Tampa and then the Jaguars. They could yeah. probably, they should win the Jaguars game. Nope. Urban that's Meyer win the Jaguars. That's when the Jaguars end their twenty game losing streak. Urban Meyer's probably happy to go to London and find some young girls there. He's a, <laughs> he thought he was going to get fired, and he yeah. didn't. They asked him if he thought he was going to, or like if he considered resigning, and he was like, no. Well, if he gets fired, then he would uh, march off to USC. Yeah, which will probably where he'll go anyway. So, on that note, though, uh, <coughs> that's all we have time for, I guess, this week. Thanks to everyone for listening in. Remember to rate, download, review, and subscribe. Follow Frank at NJTank99. Subscribe and follow the Frank the Tank Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Follow myself at Regazza Report, our producer, Nick Buono at Nick B Media. Frank, take us out with a little song if you have one. Is there any tank tune requests this week? Um, there might be if I can dig it up. I know we tried it last week. Uh, and Mikey made a pretty good, uh, a pretty good montage of you singing that song after. Uh, let's, so let's see. see. I think I might have bookmarked his tweet from this week. Uh, I bookmarked a lot of stuff, though. Let's see. Um, oh no! This is this is the last week. I don't. It's it's tough digging through all this stuff because there's so much. So well, many. We'll do it again. I guess we'll bring it back next week. Yeah, we can bring it back next week if you're down for it. But, um, Frank, Luis Rojas is no longer the Mets manager. And for that, um, hold on. Actually, Frank, we do have uh, <laughs> we do have this tweet. Uh, can you sing Center Field by John Fogarty? John Fogarty? Fogarty, yeah. Uh, nah, I got a better one. I am the Greatest by Kenny Rogers. That one kind of sucks. Vienna by Billy Joel. That's a great song. But you kind of need a piano to sing that one. Fly Me to the Moon. All right, let's see. <laughs> I guess they actually did have the request. Let's see. I always sung a different version of it. Let me see. <clears throat> Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, baby, kiss me. Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, I love you. Click like and subscribe. Tell your friends to listen to. Allow me to be frank. We're here every week. In other words, tune in. In other words, tell your friends. See you next week.